totally and brutally honest here. Sean Corbin makes Valerie Brudov look like Ivan Drago. It's as simple as that. He's beat what's in front of him tonight. He faces me. He's gonna visit mental demons again. And let's get let's get something straight. Come to me, mate. You come to me. Next time ain't no judge is gonna be needed. I'm gonna do worse than Kovalev. I am gonna do worse than Kovalev. Saturday night, mate, you better hold it together. I'm gonna smash it near you to pieces, mate. I'm gonna hit him. When he gets in the ring and we get 10 ounce gloves on, I'm gonna smash his head to bits. I'm gonna do it November the 30th against all odds. No matter what people say, the journalists write what you want. All as I'll say is tune back in and then look at me on December the 1st when I am world champion. It's as simple as that. I'm willing to die in that ring. It's as simple as that. I am willing to die. I'm willing to die, Sati. Is he? You fucking rat! Right, everybody, Belly of the Week, episode 369, before we finish up for another week. Um, I want to get your opinion briefly, Rob, actually, on this first Belly of the Week nomination, because you weren't on when we discussed this at the beginning of the show. Uh, Suat has nominated Belly of the Week for Fat Dan, getting glassed and released from ESPN. They must have found the brain envelopes from a rival streaming network. Are you sad, Rob, about Fat Dan getting the can? I don't give a shit, man, because I don't listen to a word Fat Dan has to say. Like, ever since he tried to discredit Redondo and Ward in such a fucking biased fashion, him and Steve Kim, to say this kind of shit that he said over fighters about fighters over the years. Like, I always thought he was just a big hack, and he's proved that over and over, so I don't give a shit about what Dan Raphael says. I don't care what network he's on, because I won't be watching any of it. So, unless I unfortunately run into him on a broadcast or something like that. Even like those when Coogan and all their interviews, I don't fucking watch Dan Raphael interviews Coogs! that often. Unless I can, unless there's absolutely fuck all else to watch, like I'm not going mean, to be down on the list. Put it that way, I wouldn't be breaking an appointment or anything, as Dave Chappelle said about meeting Michael Jackson. I would have to already be free. <laughs> there we are. Well, you're the week nomination for Dan. Also, Andy, we were speaking about this during the week. Uh, Guillermo Quitondo has nominated uh, Sam Maxwell. Whoops, boxer yes. punches himself while, while showing out to throw an uppercut. We could have put him in for uppercut in our, in our fantasy fighter. <laughs> oh, man, he knocked himself out. Hey, uh, that, that, was, that was one of my nominations, actually. It was tremendous, you know, so he's basically showing us how he can... Uh, and I always I always hate the gym that, he, you know, the fucking, like, the heavy bag and that. Throw the uppercut. Dude, what the fuck am I going to hit? You know, it's, well, you throw it and just, you know, just use your elbow to hit the bag and that. I says, well, fuck it, right, okay. But this guy, holy fuck, man. I said, punched himself, took a knee instantly, and within minutes, he's got a fucking black eye. And he's, he's mate saying, how's it look? Dude, ain't going to lie to you, bro. I says, that's in a bad way. Fuck. Even I showed, I showed it to the wife. She was pushing herself up, <laughs> to, by the way. <laughs> Aye, Mark, nomination, yeah. yeah Sam, Sam Maxwell, Maxwell, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Danny Young has thrown one in the chat there. I haven't been watching Big Tone on the TV, but he says, Steve, you need to add Big Tony Bellew for Bellew of the Week for getting beaten up by eight people when he is only allowed to defend himself and then KO'd John Fashion. Who aims? Have you been watching anything of Tony in action on Channel 4? No, I've, I've not seen any of Tony on the TV at, at all. I've, I've been leaving him alone. About time somebody did. Just leave him alone. He's been nominated for his own award anyway. I tell you what, it might be the failure of the week soon because we'll be coming to him later. He's on. He's starting to approach Tony did levels. I, did I just hear that right? Did Tony Bellew fight John Fashnu on the SAS show? What the fuck? Can you leave him alone, John Fashnu? Don't be trying to hit him with the big elbow. Big Fash to bash. Fucking hell. What happened there? No. Justin Fash liked that up the ass. Will, will you stop um, tuning into Channel 4 and leave him alone? <laughs> Stop turning it on. <laughs> you turn me on. Leave alone. Available on four on demand if you want to catch up. So just leave yeah. him alone. Just leave him alone. <laughs> uh, Sean Stevo and Terry Woodfine were getting stuck in on Clarissa Shields. Uh, Shields um, said, shut the fuck up right in to me. And a Muppet has strings, not a puppet, says Clarissa, because they were calling her a puppet. Nobody is controlling me, you stupid fool. Shawnee Stevo is confused. Is it not a puppet that has strings? Well, Clarissa says it's a Muppet, and that's good enough for me. She'll kick your ass if you're not careful. Here we go. Anthony Fowler getting stuck in on Devin Haney and his comments. Prime Tyke Meissen has nominated Fowler. Um, Trading Leather Boxing has nominated Devin Haney. Quite a few similar ones here. Andy, 
You've nominated a boxing scene here. Anthony Joshua would be willing to fight Tyson Fury behind closed doors. One thing I'll say about this, we've got the main man in the top corner here, Bean, looking over proceedings, and he was talking about possibly taking a fight to China. They're not one bit slow, then. They'd take a fight to Epstein's Island if it made any money. They are sounding the public out about these fights because they'll go to China in the drop of a hat. In fact, I would venture they'd probably prefer to go there because there'd be more money. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, I don't even know if it's open for business. I wouldn't believe anything they fucking... Chinese say or anyway. see or the venue, you know what I mean? Yeah, but there was talk about Joshua going to the Bird Nest Stadium in uh, Beijing a couple of years back, possibly mm. against that fucking fat, that tall Chinese heavyweight. Oh, you Zhang, yeah. Zhang yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, something along those lines. But mm, I, I, I really don't. I mean, the end of the day, so who's going to fucking go yet? I mean, the Chinese can't afford fucking tickets to go to that shit. I mean, you ever seen some of the football games that go on over there? Played in fucking hundred thousand seat stadiums with fucking two thousand fans, isn't it? Imagine me fucking Ching Chong a Chinaman turning up fucking like. Oh, do you remember, <laughs> do you remember when Bob Owen was going to take over China, and he, he had oh, an idea that they were Zhu all going to play like a dollar each, and he was going to get four million buys. Ah, Zhu Ming, fucking Zhu Shipming. I watched him in Shu Kimura the other night. There actually, he was shit. Absolute shit. Even he was a two-time gold medalist. But that was another one actually. Maybe put him in the list for next week. The worst fighters of all time. Xiao Ziming. Jumping in there, Rob? No, nope. thought he was going to go in on Xiu Ziming then. Not on my watch, everybody. Not on my watch. Uh, Anthony Fowler is having a go at people clapping for carers on Westminster Bridge. Talk about defeating the object, says Fowler. I think you mean <laughs> defeating the purpose of his own tweet, says Joe Kennedy. A good one there. Cocaine Dawkins. What about this, then, Ames? This is right up your street. Sky Sports Boxing have been having a whale of a time lately. Fantasy Fight. Lomachenko versus Nassim Hamed in their primes. Who would win? I think they're trolling a bit here, aren't they, the boys? So I Sky Sports. Sky Sports. I'm actually reading this this late one that came in here. Sorry, mate. On you go. No, it's all right, Andy. I was throwing one to Ames, actually. I was just referring to the fact that uh, Lomachenko against Nassim Hamed, fantasy fight, in their primes, Ames, who would win? Sky Sports are asking the big questions. Ames is fighting with the mute button at the minute. Right. Ames versus mute. He's asking, well. if he, he's asking if he can hear him, but no, we can't, mate. You're on mute yeah. if you can hear us. The curse of the old stream yard. I'm bringing the technical issues over with me. Like a WBC champ. A quick one from you and that, Andy. Sky Sports are trying to get a few clicks, aren't they? Lomachenko, Nassim Hamid. That's not something we should be seriously talking about. I know. You know these fantasy fights are fucking hard at the best of times and stuff. But um, I think uh, I think uh, I think Lomachenko has his way with me, boring way. And I was never a big Naz fan. It's no purely based on his antics and stuff, but like it's like everything else. You know the fundamentals. You know if you could take the power away from him, what would they have? And I think I think Lomachenko would have worked him out in the end anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. Great entertainer, great puncher, did everything right. But uh, Lomachenko would have uh, danced uh, a merry dance around he him. Might, he uh, might have, but I tell you what, it would have been interesting. Uh, if you could land. Uh, Spectacle, man! What a build-up! That would be unbelievable. Like, so that would be. I'm not altogether mad. I'm not going to shit on Sky completely with that one. I think that's like a matchup. If you're going to match up fighters with a clash of styles alone, like, it's worth watching that one. Like, because you see how Lomachenko works out, fellas. Like with slick styles, Linares. How would he do it with a guy that's so unorthodox? Would he struggle even? Like, would it look? And if, as Andy says, if Hamid can land on him, like, what's can he take it like a featherweight? So. It's not altogether a mismatch, like, I don't think. Ames, you're back with us. I had to mute you because you were making a case for Nazim knocking out Loma early. Do you explain? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the prince would have his way with uh, Lomachenko, is how I'd see it. Now, um, they've they've been doing this, haven't they? Quite quite a few outlets have been doing these fantasy fights. And there was one a couple of weeks back, which which was, like, egregious. It was someone who'd not done anything against uh, one of the legends of the sport. I can't remember who it was. The names escaped me, but... Uh, for this fantasy fight, yeah, I'd go along with Lomachenko as well. Hamid at that highest level, um, when he when, obviously when he fought Barrera, just uh, took a bit of a schooling. And uh, we were saying on punches, uh, not punches, not punches of the past, but on the Patreon, um, uh, Hamid's brother was in the um, crowd scouting out uh, Barrera and Morales, wasn't he, in the first fight? And uh, yeah. that report must have gone to 
Nassim Hamad and Hamad must have just poo pooed it and uh, obviously been uh, dealing with them. Um... Yeah, Nazim not listening. Fine. What are you thinking about the carpets and stuff and the ring walk? Exactly, maybe yeah. was on his mind. Exactly. Um, so I think he would have taken to Lomachenko the same, uh, seen the Matrix, thought I could do that a bit better and uh, would have taken a schooling again. Do you remember uh, Ian Dart losing his fucking shit over his uh, his Halloween entrance with the graveyard, the back uh, back end of it and stuff? Who's he fighting? Was it Wayne McCulloch? I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't, no, I didn't remember. It wasn't Wayne McCulloch. It was a fight in America anyway, and fucking Dart was raging because he had like the tombstones and the skeletons and all that sort of shit. Obviously, it was a bit of gimmick in that, but you know, this was offensive to, to Ian Dark. Yeah, not Saying that though, like no one does entrances like Hamid anymore. Ham Hamid's entrances are like iconic, and I don't think that's kind of followed through in this kind of. Era well, Fury, Fury had a good a good go at, uh, mm. at the Wilder rematch coming out on the. Uh, he had women carrying him as well. Can you imagine? I suppose with any fucking <laughs> stramash about that, you know. Naz just... was consistent though, wasn't he? He did a good job mm -hmm. each time. You got Javonta Davis has done a few good ones, but they need to build up a body of work, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's build up the body of the work for Belly of the Weeks, episode 369. Trade and Leather Boxing has nominated Anthony Fowler, putting up a video of when he beat 5 0 and 3 Jay Byrne to watch this guy said this. Yes, Danny, it, was, it wasn't exactly Foch versus Kessler, says Trade and Leather Boxing. That probably was better than I read it out. Apologies for butchering that. Uh, butchering this, Andy, Justice for Frez, it goes on. Oh, yes. Must be about 60 by now, but the WBA regular plight worsens. Uh, worsens? A Quendo wins char case. This guy is trying to write as if this is a bad thing. What's going on? Um, nah, it, justice for Frez, mate. I mean, he's been at the ring now for how long now? Six years since he fought Shaggy or whatever <laughs> it was. And he is still in the running for a WBA World, sorry, a Panamanian world title fight, right? This, 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 this is incredible. So, just so, uh, no, so man, what do you call him? Mendoza? Just do him a favour, email him a fucking title like fucking Suleiman did for fucking Haney, all right? Could and Devin Haney not just forward his on? You know, the way you press that little arrow and it forwards oh, things on, <laughs> as I say, you can become the fucking WBA P a PDF. A W Reader champion or something like that. I don't know. W or the WBA High Court champion. Just fucking game something. He's not gonna be fighting again anytime soon for fuck's sake. He's shite as well. <laughs> something um something will be happening though, because I've, I've been reading a bit into that and I think uh the uh, other party that obviously Frez is uh in My with idea. yeah, they've got forty five days to answer to Frez's complaint, so something hopefully will finally get resolved. In the coming days, am I right in saying though this fight was actually with the purse bids previously, and then the purse bids wasn't even fulfilled because at, nobody at fucking bid on it? Sandy. At least they, once, I'm pretty sure, yeah. But they bid on it, I don't think. Or no, Trevor Bryan's I'm, floating about in the background as well, isn't he? Then no, but and then the child got them for drugs. The new drug test, and they got oh, shot as well. Oh, yeah. He got shot. He got shot at a Turkish kebab shop. I remember. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> he did. Fucking go shot at the start, remember? Bloody hell. It wasn't Teppo, was it? Do you remember him? Erkin Teppo. Oh, I heard that guy. Should get him in the mix. Peds. Right. Uh, Devin Haney makes a racist comment, says six niche nine, and Anthony fucking Wolverine Fowler comes out yes. looking even worse. Absolute parody at this point. Fowler's been having an absolute mare. And fair play to O'Hara Davis. He's been doing some some high quality trolling on Fowler as well, hasn't he? And the, the question has come up once again, which we all know the answer to. O'Hara Davis was thrown under the bus. If it was a more high profile guy who had more uh, earning potential, sold more tickets, was of more use, he wouldn't have been dealt with the way he was. And Davis has a bit of beef. Beef. He has a bit of grit between his teeth, Andy. And I think he's got every right to, to be honest. Yeah, as I say, it was about a point he'd been used up by Eddie, didn't he? I mean, he he'd, he mouthed off for a Taylor fight, got handled, and then he came out with the sun comments, and then you know, basically kind of cast aside off used to no cunt. Um, yeah, MTK, I suppose, will look after him. But um, as as far like say where he you know where he's going to go in that um, European level would be very very generous if you saying that like. Hmm. Uh, you can't put on a scale what people are saying. Some people are coming off with things about areas, about race, about this, that, and the other. You can't put it on a sliding scale, really. But um, you know, it's it's not 
you can't take the moral high ground here and not take the moral high ground there. So I think O'Hara Davis was uh, wrongly done to, and I like the way he's been trolling Anthony Fowler. So I'm yeah, well, it. Anthony Fowler's coming up on one of my nominations, but at the end of the day, boxing's full of hypocrites. At the end of the day, you know, we've yeah. all done it. We've all, yeah, we've all done it, you know. Ourselves included, exactly, exactly. Uh, Kevin Chase nominated uh, Devin Haney. Uh, twat trying to be like B-Hop. We all know how that ended up. Uh, Amir Khan, our hero, hashtag Muhammad Ali. He then put up a picture of Ali... <laughs> Uh, hitting someone, I'm not quite at the screenshot, but I think uh, Khan's hitting Devin Alexander. Stephen at Huggy963, nominating that one. Uh, what else have we got? I think that is all the ones that I have. Yeah, Fowler, he's, um, he's oh, hey. going to be my pick, but uh, nominations, Andy, here you go. Oh, wait a minute, I've got a good one for Fowler. Like, but uh, see, Sam Maxwell, as, as I say, <laughs> Devin Haney for that wee rap lyric, Rob. I thought you might want to maybe get this copyrighted. I am not a racist. I will never be racist. I am chasing greatness. Undefeated. Uh, obviously, as well, he, he tweeted it as well. He says, I've just had a very positive... So this is Devin Haney, sorry. I've had a very positive conversation with Mauricio Suleiman, president of the WBC, and confirmed to him directly my commitment to be a role model and absolutely rejection of discrimination of any kind. Well, you just had your boss felt me, man, but you should have stayed true to your word and say, look, I wasn't being racist. So, you fucking missed a trick there. Uh, Rick Glazer, by the way, he knew, he's obviously happy as fuck that Darren Raphael has been fired or sacked. He's new writing for BoxingScene.com. I just found this out literally five minutes ago that that fat Dan's at BoxingScene.com now, right? So it's interesting. Steve Kim, who worked for Boxing Scene, goes to ESPN. Fat Dan goes for ESPN down to Boxing Scene. So interesting development there. But anyway, so uh, he's happy that that uh, you know the you know, the guy who's outgrown his own skeleton is uh, is working for a website now, right? So uh, this guy, Fat Stevie De La Glace, right? Booking agent. No many followers on Twitter and stuff like that. Fucking sends a screenshot. A fucking Rick Glazer's tax returns for the IRS for the last six years. <laughs> holy, holy, holy fuck. So, apparently, Rick Glazer, who likes the glass people, is in the hawk to the IRS to the principal sum of $138,734.34 to the IRS since 2004 to 2009. Oh, so uh, Richard S. Glazier got glassed off uh, Fat Stevie De, De, De La Glacier on Twitter. Um, my final nomination goes to Anthony, uh, Anthony Fowler. This one goes in for Ricky Gra uh, Gravel, Steve. I think you got added in there. I don't know if, if you spotted it yet. <clears throat> but it's a, it looks like a Facebook, no. It's either a Facebook uh, chat or a Twitter chat. DM chat, but it looks at it. So, the adventures of Super Stefan. So, I think Stefan's a young lad and he's got some sort of disability or something like that. Sorry, I didn't know what the situation is. And apologies to anybody who knows him and stuff. I'm not giving him the, the full due and attention, but I said it's, it's just been sent to me. So, it reads someone's notifying the family basically on, on Twitter as to what's happened here. So, so, it goes like this Hi, Peter, Lisa, and Stefan. First of all, I'd like to say I'm so glad your amazing son responds to the treatment you have been managed to get him. I became aware of Stefan throughout Twitter and I wanted to bring this to your attention. There is a bo British boxer using your son's video to, pr to promote his CPD oil business. If you have granted him permission, that's okay. But, so I need to bring up the next screen here, but if you haven't, then I think what he is saying about the CPD oil he is selling over here is extremely dangerous and misleading. Hope your little warrior keeps fighting. Was a heart wrenching video to watch. All the best. Keep fighting. So the family gets back in response. This is obviously talking about Anthony Fowler here. The family gets back in response to him and says, Thanks for the heads up. No one has permission to use our video, and I'm particularly irked that people continue to use it to push CBD products when the video is actually highlighting THC. Yeah, THC, yeah. Just stuff on the leaves, isn't it? So, eh. Uh, Tony Fowler, eh, Anthony Fowler again, man. That's a bad one, that. <laughs> it's a bad one. And people are saying in the chat at the minute we should be renaming this for Bellew of the, of the Week to the Fowler of the Week because... F I don't know if... It, this will stem back to the last... A couple of weeks ago when Fowler, Fowler got called out on this. So it's supposed to be the family getting back to it. But, yeah, Fowler, definitely. But So that's my nominations, mate. Yeah, um, something I was going to just throw in there while it was in my head, not fairly related, but boxing scene are quite, they're quite on the scene now. They're the major players, you'd say. And um, I noticed Trix Dixon and uh, Ron Lewis are both writing for them now. They got took over, didn't they, by CBS, yeah. the American broadcaster. 
last summer. So they're obviously pumping money into it and putting out content and getting some quite high profile writers. So Dan Raphael going there, you know, might not be as shocking as you think. Because I think CBS is Showtime, isn't it? So you can see Raphael maybe on a big whack. I think show her uh, boxing scene, uh, a website that's going places. Anyway, uh, wrapping Rob Kelly, do you have any nominations? Well, my little one doesn't want me to do the nominations. Just want to watch movies with me. I'll be in there in a minute. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to nominate Marin Hazzy. He did a IFL this week where he surprised, surprised, and uh, mentioned Conor McGregor again. And he was dropping all kinds of retard bombs and everything. Paulie want to watch himself. Like, he's already out of favour um, because of the Wilder stuff. Wilder got kicked off the broadcast. And he's saying some wild stuff like on camera every time he gets the opportunity. So, um, he want to uh, watch himself. He's, he's, it was just a little bit wild. Like, you want to get over it? Like, as McGregor said to him, get over it. You want to get over it. Like, he's still talking about Conor McGregor sparring session two years later. Like, and you know what came up in the suggested videos underneath it? Two years ago, video. Pauly Malinazzi keeps it real on Conor McGregor. Pauly Malinazzi goes in raw on Conor McGregor. All these videos from two years ago. <laughs> and he's still on about it now. Like, yeah, fucking let it go. Like, whatever the fuck happened, nobody gives a shit about it. You're the one that keeps talking about it. Absolute banger, like Malinazzi. I mean, even in the sport, he's brilliant at calling the fights, but this fucking behavior with the McGregor thing, like, it's beyond the joke at this stage. Like, the MMA fans are so stupid, it's stupid. Like, he has no balls. Like, he's just, he's like a psychotic <laughs> stalker. Like, he's not relaxed. Like, he ain't got no balls, Connor. He ain't got no balls. This is going to be Malinazzi's legacy if you're not careful. Yeah, I, mean... I know. This is it. Like, you forget he was a fucking two time world champion. Wow. Fight after. He was well, held in there against Cotto, broken jaw for 12 rounds. I, I, I had a lot of respect for Malinaji then. He's a strange yeah. guy. I don't like the spitting. I think I wish he'd cut out the spitting. Yeah, yeah you want to relax. Like He's going to end up fucking losing his contract like from doing some stupid shit outside. See, like, bonus though. See, bonus. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't need to worry about his contract at the end of the day. He, he's, see, yeah. he, he's the type of guy who gets banned. Was it Deontay Wilder don't try to ban him for a broadcast or something well, like that? I can't mean because yeah. because he was he wasn't towing the party line because he's a guy who's actually made it before he got there and actually can say what he wants because he's no actually kind of dependent on that on that gig. So he gives his actual honest opinion like no like everybody else. So uh, I've got a lot of time for Paul actually. But he needs to let that corner shit go. Like yeah, absolutely. I, as a guy who calls the sport, he's second to none. Like, he's probably one of the best out there. Like, but he's fucking. What is he on about? We shut up about that. Like, we argue, we get it. Right, McGregor didn't beat you in the spy, right? Fucking let it go. Fucking hell, man. Nobody believed it anyway. Like, what the fuck are you to, trying to? The fact that he's trying to convince people so hard that all this time later is lead me towards the stage that maybe he fucking had trouble figuring it out and got clocked a couple of times and his pride is super dented because he will not shut the fuck up about Conor McGregor. <laughs> oh. Right, yeah, talking of shutting the fuck up, we're going to have to get out of here soon. At least two panel members are dying for a piss. I can confirm at least two panel members are dying for a piss. I'm not going to say which two. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them. I've, I've got a long nomination as well. Oh, uh, you could. <laughs> it's one Steve missed out from a couple of weeks back, and I think oh, it sorry. deserves reading. Go um, on. Am I right to say it, yeah? Yeah, of course, yeah. All right, cool. So uh, this was um, one of the comments we got. I'm going on... for a piss of a pack. <laughs> oh, worries, no worries. <laughs> It's one of the comments we got from Boxing News TV on Wilder is not the biggest puncher of all time, uh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. So Elias Farias wrote, No disrespect to the many gifted and very knowledgeable boxing fans out there. Jonta Wilder cannot be beat legitimately. Jonta Wilder was cheated. Jonta Wilder is the greatest boxer of all time. Jonta Wilder is the hardest hitting boxer of all time. Jonta Wilder had to be stopped before he proved against all odds just that. John Wilder shocked the jealous boxing community and establishment so much they were forced to collaborate with each other simply to keep from being shown how insignificant they are in comparison. Holding back a talented genius is the one thing our country does for free. All our country, the citizens, the elected officials, the selected politicians, why, 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 you might ask. Fear, that that's the answer, fear. Max Kellerman, Jim Lampley, Larry Merchant, all of the major sports-related corporate interests, cowards, afraid of John Wilder doing good. 
They don't want you to do good either simply out of being craven, dastard, re recreant poltroons. This is a uh, Joseph J language here. <laughs> Ted, Le Ted Atlas was acting like he wanted to fight John Tewilder at a press conference. Larry Merchant said if he was 50 years younger, he would kick Floyd Mayweather's backside. See what I mean? John Tewilder is a national godsend treasure. And then in, in a shorter nomination from a couple of weeks back, uh, Tyson Fury in response to Drew McIntyre calling him out in the WWE for after his WrestleMania victory. Tyson Fury said, first, to say congratulations and what a fantastic job. Secondly, I accept his challenge anytime, any place, anywhere. Linda Friday in response to that put, please hospitalize him. Stay safe, champion. So those are my two nominations from a couple of weeks back that I put forward for this week. I tell you what, I thought we should be finished by the time I got back there. I thought it was never going to finish, so the bubble's nice and trophy there, you know? <laughs> we thought we were going to hear you, Andy, like that scene in Naked Gun when he was oh, pissing with the mic. <laughs> but I was like, I was thinking with Steve Stuffer and American Pie, I can <laughs> taste the bubbles. <laughs> oh, it was tremendous, that, by the way. Oh. Some great nominations this week. Absolutely brilliant. Right. Uh, it's only one for me. Uh, I'm not swayed by the Deontay Wilder guy, unfortunately, although it was very eloquently written, uh, read out. I'm going to go for Fowles. It has to be Anthony Fowler for me, Andy. Yeah, it's between him and uh, Rick Glazier for me, actually. Imagine getting your tax returns put out on Twitter like that. <laughs> and absolutely fucking owned. Uh, we think, uh, in fact, there's also a bit said about fucking tax payments and stuff, like, uh, interest payments. But yeah, I think Tony Fowler as well. Um He's the only guy, on, he's the only, only boxer on Twitter I've actually got blocked. So anytime I need to just go and view his comments, I just need to unblock him and go and see it because he just is an, an annoying subhuman species. You know, this is the guy who was like charging people for fucking autographs before he went to the Olympics. Retweets? He's, retweets. Um, he got iced in the Olympics, which was fantastic to see. Boxing Twitter was united. Scott Fitz does the business as well. We're all fucking rejoicing. But to go on here like fucking, you know, CPD cures, fucking AIDS, fucking dementia, every other illness under under the sun, Tony eh, Tony Fowler will fucking try and sell it. And if you look at his actual Twitter, the news, so it's got Rio 2016 Olympian, Commonwealth gold medalist. He should have been disqualified by he should be actually by a silver medalist. Official boxer, 12 and 1, 9 kilos of matchroom boxing, USC code Fowler, 50% discount CPD. If you want CPD, gentlemen, go and see Nightingale on Twitter. I'll set I'll set you up far cheaper than Tony Bell, uh, Tony Fowler, and probably better stuff as well. Lead the alcoholic frotch uh, sums it up quite well. Tony Fowles for multiple offences. I think that's quite a good one. So it's two for Fowles then at the moment. Uh, Ames, who are you going for? As much as I do want to go for Elias Farias, uh, I'll, I'll round it up to three for Anthony Fowler. Did he also do that NHS one from earlier Earlier, you read out? Was that Fowler as well? Yes, that was Fowler as well, yeah. Yeah, coupled with that and the, the THC thing. I think um, it's been a poor week for Anthony, um, what with quarantine and now a potential belly of the week award. So I'll go with Anthony Fowler as well. Absolutely a poor week or a strong week, some would say maybe, if he's going to win belly <laughs> yeah. of the week. Absolutely, can add that to his Twitter profile. Uh, your pick is irrelevant, Rob. Don't let that hold you back. Who are you going for? Oh, it's going to be Malnagy this week. Can't top that. Like, you want, you want to just let that go? How is he still going out about this? Like, nobody's pulling him up, and they're all having a laugh at him. Like, I want to ask him about it. It's just setting him up to go on a fifteen-minute Conor McGregor and like so. Well, as you this week, he deserves it. Like for Fowler, like we're gonna have to, as you said, we're gonna have to have an interim Fowler of the week as well. Like at this stage, because he's the, he's the, he's the sequel. Like, isn't he at this stage? <laughs> he's <laughs> like a newer, fresher version of Bellew, isn't he? Yeah, not as good either. So, yeah, um, we won't have half the career that Bellew's had. Like whatever you say about him, but uh, um, and there's a lot. Yeah, just leave him alone. But uh, just leave Fowler alone. Uh, I give it to Malinazi this week. One well, for Malinazi. Well, we're going to give it to Fowler. Why not? CBD, get there. Good old Fowler getting the belly of the week for episode 369. 